what about, I mean, the $173,000 to the IRS or the state attorney general having to step in? I mean, yeah, the IRS. That's pretty serious. The IRS. One of the big things, as I was compiling my little And I want you to know that I am loving all of these questions. Oh, great. Thank you so much for asking them. Yeah, well, I, my hope in doing this is that, because I have, going into this, I had no idea who to believe. I didn't know if I should be believing the Board of Soups and that there's some incompetence. I didn't know if I should believe in you and that there's incompetence against them and these other department heads. It's very clouded for someone just taking an outside perspective who isn't involved in local politics and is just figuring out what the hell's going on? Why, what is the auditor controller? Why is she in the news all the time? Why are people bashing her? Is it justified? Is it warranted? But that being said, one of the things that keeps coming up is these deadlines <laughs> that keep getting missed. I'm looking through my notes here to try to find, um, uh, John Ford, Their office was having to develop a budget based on estimated fund balances because um, the county's single audit for two years in a row wasn't submitted on time. Um, The county can't apply for allotted funding, $4.4 million in community development block grant funding because of failure to complete and file, $14.3 in funding for the state's Bureau of Cannabis. Um, Interest apportionment has not taken place for the fiscal year 2020 to 2021 and 21 22. Statutory deadlines for for reporting property taxes not being met. Um, the fiscal year 2019 to 20 single audit was two months past due following a six month six month extension. Failure to respond to IRS regarding payroll tax discrepancies, which cost the county 173 thousand. $22 in penalties, assessments, and liens. Do you want to talk about that for a sec? I'll talk about all of them. So what, I mean, you hear these lobbyist reports not submitted timely, $14,000 in penalties, failure to pay timely for vendors resulting in late fees, employee expense claims, child support payments, election poll, worker stipends. I mean, there are valid claims that something is not running smoothly mm-hmm. because things, deadlines are not being met, which as someone who's not even in finance can understand that's a problem. But as someone from the outside can also understand the county has not run well. I don't know if that's a a overarching theme across all government. You hear that from a lot of different people. But here in Humboldt County especially, there are governmental problems. And there's a lot of red tape. And so hearing that list, and you're over there kind of smiling, and I'm very excited to hear what you have to say, what... When you hear that, what comes to mind? What is holding you up from hitting these deadlines? Because that's a long list. And that's just a few of the things that have not been met on time. Yeah, what you're reading is the staff report that's going to be on the agenda yeah. for Tuesday. Oh, so it's coming? Okay, I'm going to have to see that. Oh, I I'm gonna hope have to see that do. meeting. Um, there's... So I, I think it's being published right now as we sit here. I think here, that's I, I pulled that directly from the staff report. Yeah, they they presented it a couple weeks ago. And then, uh, but I was at a conference. They knew I was at a conference. And then, you know, Ryan posted an article, absent auditor controller delays the conversation. They should have just waited for me to get back. But now they're bringing it again. And what I noticed in that staff report from a couple weeks ago is there were 40 items. It was one list copy pasted twice. You see the same things repeated uh, once at the top and then once at the bottom to get you 40 items. So right off the bat, I'm like, okay, you're trying to make it look like it's a lot more. Two, some of the things on that list, I'm not responsible for. Lobbyist reports, those are filed by the CAO, not by the Auditor Controller's Office. Not sure why I'm taking responsibility for a report I don't file. The election stipends, I have email documentation from the clerk recorder herself acknowledging that they didn't send them to us to pay. How was I going to pay something I didn't even know I had to pay? When they did send them to us, we paid them right away. And they had to be broken out in two parts because the election workers, some of them are members of the public, some of them are county employees. If they are members of the public, we pay them out of accounts payable. If they are county employees, they get paid out of payroll. So they're paid at different times. When the elections office sent us the list, the first thing we had to do for them is separate out which ones are employees. We let them know. Then they send us the batches through accounts payable. 
They said, these are all the people that have to get paid. We prepared the payments and they were sent. Later, they wanted us to pay employees. They wanted to know why we hadn't paid employees yet. And I asked, can you send me the email when you sent us the information to pay the employees? And then they replied, acknowledging, so sorry, it was never sent to you. Okay. Can you send it to me now? <laughs> but see, that's crazy because they're blaming you for it. So if, it, if the holdup is on their end because they've failed to send you what you needed or whatever, and then they point the blame at you, that's kind of a problem. It is because I have the evidence to disprove it. You have the evidence for all that? Yep. Of course, that's why I'm smiling. That's why I'm not crying all the time. That's why I'm not worried. It's because I know that I'm telling the truth and I know that I can back it up with evidence. The reason why you have anonymous complaints, the reason why there's all these private investigations that no one's allowed to know about is because there's nothing there. Sue me. Let's go to court. What will we have to do in court? Bring evidence. What rights will I have in court? I'll be able to face my accusers. I'll be able to see the evidence and provide counter evidence. I don't have those rights here. Here, everything's anonymous. And I can't see it, but it gets leaked to Ryan Burns, who will write a story without asking me for my response. What about, I mean, the $173,000 to the IRS or the state attorney general having to step in? I mean, yeah, the IR that's pretty serious. The IRS one, we've beat that one to death. I don't know how many times, but they want to keep bringing it up. I file taxes timely for payroll taxes. Haven't missed one yet for the court at least. The IRS made a mistake in this case and said that I hadn't filed the taxes. So what I did is I sent them screenshots of their confirmation screens. I had to fax them because they don't accept emails. I printed all of the screenshots, all the confirmation pages, and showing the date and time that the payments were made. And I sent them all to the IRS for every quarter that they said we hadn't paid. They released the lien because of it. But here we are on the list still. What were those? Did Was the county still fine that money? The money had to be paid in order for the liens to be released. But they only released them because I had evidence that I had already paid them. But the county is still out that money. But that wasn't... No, we've turned in forms to get it back. So nobody's talking about that. No. But we're going to talk about it on Tuesday. Wow. And so the state attorney general's involvement. That one was a very interesting situation. Um, I work with the state controller's office. The state controller's office is divided into different branches. There's the cost plan, the single audit, property tax, uh, special programs, a bunch of different. Oh, and then the financial transactions report, which is the one that the attorney general was asking about. When the financial transactions report people emailed me asking for the, re the report, I said, we don't have audited numbers. They said, that's fine. We'll take unaudited numbers. Okay. We were still posting transactions. I didn't even have finalized numbers yet. Departments were still sending them to me. At the same time, the state controller's office sent the cost plan analysts to our county. They were physically here, and I was working with them for several weeks on that same fiscal year, 1920, going over the cost plan and the charges for that. So while I'm working with the state controller's office, the state controller's office felt like they weren't getting responses because I was talking to the wrong group. When the letter from the attorney general came, I was working with the state controller's office because they were here investigating the financial transactions report. So the group that was involved in that branch, the financial transactions report, they didn't even know that the attorney general had sent me this letter asking for the thing that I'm working on with the state controller's office because it was different people within that branch. So when the state controller people that I'm talking to tell me they had no idea about it, that was my response to ryan burns that was my response to the board if you go back to watch that board meeting the cao gave them the same response because she and i were working with the same state controller's office people so she also said 
that's my understanding as well. Because she separately communicated with the state controller's office, who also told her they had nothing to do with it. So then the Ryan Burns reaches out again to the attorney general and state controller, and they say that, yes, they did send that request. It was different people from who we were working with. And then when that was clarified, he wrote a story as if I had misled people. Yes, I believe what I had read was that there was some confusion on your end and that you had said they sent it in error, I believe. That's what I believed because that's what I was told by the state controller's office. Because you were working with them already. Yes. And I'm so glad that I can point to the video of the board meeting where the CAO is saying that's what she got too from when she communicated to the And the CAO, we should say, because we keep referencing her, it's Alicia, right? Alicia Hayes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It seems like she keeps coming up a lot when these when these problems keep coming to It's a the very surface. small, <laughs> small government organization. You know, it's the same key players. Mm -hmm. um, when Ryan Burns wrote that story, I got mad and I emailed him and I was like, what's your problem? Or I texted him. I don't know. I think I texted him. And I said, why are you, do you believe that I'm lying? Why would you make people think that I'm misleading them? You know that that's, that that was the best information I had at the time. The CAO said the same thing. And he's like, he said that he didn't feel like he was lying when he said that I got it wrong. Okay. No, you just omitted that she also got it wrong. Convenient. Mm-hmm. But that's video evidence. That's not even an email. That's video evidence. Yeah, you do seem very confident. You seem like you have a lot. I mean, I, I haven't seen the information yet, so I can only speak in theory. But it, if you do have all of this evidence, it seems like you're sitting in a good spot except for the fact that I'm not quite sure how much of that the public is getting. Yeah. Um, I have a campaign team and you know, people, volunteers, people who want me to win and they're telling me the same thing. Yeah. And my answer, I'm too busy doing the job to run for the job. I don't, you know, my, my opponent is retired. Her campaign group is mostly retired people. They have all the time in the world. They're also being backed by people who work at the county who have insider knowledge about what they're doing in their departments, who have their connections. They have the benefit of already being there at the county to talk to other people about the county and who they support. It should be very telling that the people supporting my opponent are all county employees and their spouses and their friends. Um, my department is just 12 people and they're too busy working. So <laughs> you're not going to see them in the comment sections during work hours. And you're not going to see them at my campaign kickoffs because they're, they need time off. They have weekends. Um, I am, I have a website where I'm trying my best to put information there as often as I can. I'm responding to lost coast elections questions. As I'm able, I have my Facebook page that all of a sudden is getting a lot of attention. That, that has been in the news quite a lot recently. I, the, it's so weird. Lost Coast Outpost Facebook keeps comments. trying to like defame me, but they're also making me very popular. You are very, you are very polarizing. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that a lot of people either really support you or are not not big fans. There's not really a whole lot of in between. Yeah. I don't really know what to do about that or how to 